I'm going to talk to you about uh, the collapse of civilization and the future of humanity. So these are pretty lofty topics. Um, I want to start out by assuring you that I am fully unqualified to talk about them. I am not a historian, I'm not an anthropologist or a political scientist or anything that would qualify me. I'm a novelist and not even a very respectable one. Um, <laughs> I wrote a book about zombies. so. Obviously, I'm not here to uh, blow your minds with a bunch of new research or practical solutions to the world's problems. I don't really think it's uh, a fiction writer's job to know everything or provide the answers. I'm kind of just here to observe things and imagine things and try to share them in a way that, that makes you think about it. So. Uh, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot uh, is the apocalypse. And I don't mean the kind um, where like, Jesus flies down on a horse and sends everyone to heaven or hell. Uh, I don't mean the kind where a meteor wipes out all life on Earth. I mean the tamer kind where humanity survives, but society as we know it uh, has collapsed. So it's generally considered a bad thing, um, but if you're a bit of an optimist and a little bit crazy, uh, you can see an opportunity in there because Society as we know it is terrible, right? Um, it's a mess, and if it were to collapse, we would get to start over. So I kind of always wonder what we might do with an opportunity like that, with a clean slate. Um, most people would say not much. The assumption seems to be that as soon as you cut the power, we immediately go back to the Stone Age and all become violent savages again. I, I don't think that's realistic because I don't think we can ever really, or I don't think we would actually start from scratch. You take away all the infrastructure, all the technology, you still have thousands of years of intellectual development that's locked up safe in here. So I think it would be more like reliving junior high with all of your <laughs> adult knowledge and experience. You're not going to make all the same embarrassing mistakes you did when you were 12. Um, so because Civilization, in modern civilization, it's not just its technology. We ha there's been fundamental changes to the way that we think. We used to be animals. We used to be just random groups of apes running around killing everything we could find. And then at some point, we settled down. We developed uh, language and music and art, writing, uh, ideas like reason and logic and science, scientific method, um, concepts like individuality and uh, personal liberty and then democracy and cool things like basic human rights, um, civil rights, women's rights, children's rights, gay rights, even animal rights. This whole concept of rights is a pretty recent invention. And the kind of things that we're working on nowadays, like uh, equality and inclusivity, sensitivity, that kind of stuff is extremely high tech and it's, it's in our heads. So. There's been all these huge paradigm shifts, and, but it took a long time to get there. And along the way, we've sort of accumulated a lot of junk. We have all of this, uh, this leftover ideas and values and traditions that came from another time. They sort of served a purpose in another time, but they've become obsolete. But they're still around, kind of like those weird old laws like where you can't put an ice cream cone in your pocket or, or go skydiving on Sunday. They're kind of these we're tangled up in this residue of old systems that we have outgrown. So the appeal of an apocalypse is that all this junk gets swept out and you're left with just the core paradigms that we have developed and sort of encoded into the cultural DNA. So you have a clean foundation to build whatever it is we decide to build without all these entrenched old power structures bogging it down. So by now, you're probably starting to wonder, when am I going to unveil the doomsday weapon and uh, you know, usher in the new order? I do think that would be simpler. That would certainly simplify the process. But um, I don't think that's necessary. I think we can accomplish a lot of interesting things without destroying the world or killing anybody. So that's nice. Um, uh, because. I think that society as we know it is mostly in our heads. It's kind of a shared hallucination of sorts. We, we know that we need food and shelter to stay alive, but most of everything beyond that is highly subjective. We determine 
what our standards of living need to be. We decide how much comfort we want, uh, how much wealth we feel we need to have, how much uh, safety and security versus freedom and all these different ratios that we're, ba we're balancing. We choose those priorities and then we build the system to support that. So if we wanted to, we could completely remake society at any time if we all agreed to do it because it's just in our heads. We don't do that because it would involve taking a lot of risks and probably giving up things. We don't know where it would lead, so we don't because we're selfish and we are afraid of change. And these are sort of natural impulses that may be just in inherent to human nature. Even so, I think that those are things that we can minimize, in, minimize the role in our lives and in society if we're actively resisting them. I don't think we're resisting them. I think we're, for the most part, indulging those impulses. And politically, socially, the general agenda seems to be to maintain the status quo. We will allow incremental, gradual changes here and there, but we don't want any big earthquakes. We don't want revolutions. We want stability. But why? What is so great about stability? I mean, are we not all fairly pissed off about the way things are. Does anybody other than the sociopathic billionaires actually like the status quo? <laughs> no. <laughs> so if, we, if not, <laughs> why do we, are we unwilling to take chances with it, with the status quo? Um, there's all this talk in politics about what is reasonable or what is realistic or, or achievable, but no one really means what is literally possible. They mean what we will allow to be possible as a society. Um, George Bernard Shaw says, uh, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. So my question is, what if we became less reasonable? What if we tried thinking apocalyptically and imagine the world as a blank slate to give ourselves the freedom of exploring any idea, uh, no matter how radical it may seem, without this predetermined ceiling of what already exists? People love to talk about uh, how history repeats itself, uh, nothing ever changes, there's nothing new under the sun, and we've, we've seen it all, and it's all bad. Uh, they'll say, you know, this revolution failed and this one failed, so therefore all revolutions fail. Because human nature doesn't change. But this is so arrogant. Everything we think we know about human nature comes from 6,000 years of recorded history, maybe 10 if you're generous. We, uh, and it's absurd to make any sweeping statements about what is possible based on a sample that tiny. This is a tiny blip in the timeline of our species. I think we don't know what's possible. If history does repeat, each cycle is moving forward a little bit because we are continuing to evolve. Um, there's never been a time exactly like now, and humans have never been exactly what we are now. And I think that we'll, we'll, we'll never know what kind of world we can build unless we're willing to let this one fall apart. Thank you.